Hi, Heather here from Creative Kiwi. I hope you can understand my accent. I know it's a wee bit strange for some of you. Uh, this video I've put together to show the techniques that we use in our winner's circle and the hoop placemat. Um, this video is designed to go together with the actual instructions which are included in the file. So it, it doesn't show every single bit of the embroidery but rather the techniques that we use when we make this design. With the design file you'll get two versions. Um, you get the white one that we've got here which is all made in all one colour or one fabric I should say. We have used just one colour thread throughout to make it almost a tone on tone type thing. You could certainly do something, well an idea I had was using variegated threads. Or as I say you could use like with the rainbow one that we've got next, you could just use the three colours of the rainbow uh, still with the one fabric. Certainly the one fabric's faster and quicker because you're just doing one fabric. Uh, if you want to try out different styles and you could do like we have with the rainbow one where we've used multi-fabrics or multi-colours. Um, you don't have to do the rainbow, you can do pick your favourite colours. I'm sure we can make some really amazing placemats. I look forward to seeing them. Anyway, let's get on to it. What I'm going to do um, is show, first of all, just how you do the one fabric segment. Really simple. And then I'm going to show you how you have put all the different colours if you want to do it that way. And then I'm going to go into the joining. Because basically the joining of these designs is the same whether you use one fabric or multi fabrics. So the only difference is yeah, how much time you take to make that first segment. So let's get going. We start with hooping two layers of water soluble stabiliser and then stitching colour one which is the placement line which shows you the segment. And uh, what we do then is I just float the backing fabric underneath. Um, I've certainly gotten the directions if you want to take it off the hoop and tape it in. It's completely up to you. Then we basically just add our batting or our palin and our one colour fabric which is obviously white for this one. And it's just a matter of stitching that uh, second colour and that's your first segment made. I'll just talk about backing fabrics for this particular placement. If you're doing the one fabric one, you can actually make it reversible. So if you use the same colour bobbin thread and the same colour um, top thread, you could it, it will look pretty on both sides. Uh, the multicolored one, because you're changing threads all the time, I didn't really think that we'd be wanting to change our bobbin threads all the time. So um, for that particular one, I've just actually used felt on the back. That's what I've used for backing fabric. And um, this one that I'm looking at at the moment is actually cutaway. I use cutaway quite a lot for the uh, back of placemats because I have a lot of it and it doesn't fray. If you want to use cotton on the back, so you did want to make it reversible like a lot of our uh, placemats are, I'd suggest that you have an iron-on interfacing onto the back. Just it makes it easier to cut it away at the back and you don't have to worry about threads. With the cutting away, the sharper scissors you've got the better and obviously the yeah, the, the neater you get it at this point uh, stops it from looking messy at the end basically. Now you put that back into your hoop and do the embroidery. I'm not going to bore you with the embroidery because it's all in the instructions and it's, it is just straight out embroidery. All that's left to do for your first segment is now to remove it from the hoop, um, cut away your water soluble stabiliser. Now obviously you leave a little bit of a, an edge on where the second stitches are, but where the raw edges are, try and get as close as you can to your stitching line because that's where you're going to do the joining. So the neater joins you have or the closer they are, the better it is. Now that's it for, for your first segment. Uh, if you're just doing one fabric, You've done it, and the other five segments are all done the same way. For the rainbow one, or just the multi-fabric one, let's say it does not have to be rainbow colours, um, you're just going to have, you've got a choice of four colours that you can actually put on each segment, and they can be different, they can be the same. So this just next step is just going to show you exactly how to, to place them. And pretty much the same as before, so you hook your water soluble stabiliser, you stitch your colour one, you put your backing fabric underneath. The first difference is you put your batting only on the front of the hoop and then you stitch your colour two. 
and it's just going to give you the different layers of your um, colours. And as you can see on the screen, you've got that batting down. You get your, your first fabric, your main one, which is the, the main one around the edge. And you stitch the next colour to stitch that down. Miracle of modern technology. It was done that fast. Then you're going to cut away the uh, area where the next fabric is. Now, if you are doing the rainbow um, design, don't throw away this fabric because you can use it for the, the little patch bit that you do in that colour again. Don't throw it away anyway because you can use, there's quite a bit left over for that that you can use again somewhere else. You don't have to be too pedantic at this point because you are actually going to be covering that area with fabric. But just to help us to remove bulk makes it neater. Now the next fabric we used was the white. Now it's, it's the um, sort of the quite nicely quilted bits. You could, if you really wanted to, um, put two different colours here. Now the next bit, you could actually cut out the middle portion. Um, I don't bother because it's just got cotton, but if you were using a lighter colour on top or um, quite bulky and your machine didn't like bulk, then I would cut out the inner bit where we've just stitched the third fabric. At this point, you need to just cut away the excess from that middle point. Now, what I've done next, I because I'm using white on the fourth colour, uh, for that sort of second frame, I call it a frame around the centre, um, you can actually have the different colour as well. I haven't for this particular sample, so I'm not cutting away that bottom edge. But if you were going to put a different colour in, um, you'd also need to cut away the um, white fabric just at that, that um, bottom edge there, see, as I show, uh, because you would be putting your next piece of fabric over that. Okay, and say so I'm just using white for it, so I've just put uh, put it back down. I'm going to put it back into the hoop, and I'm going to attach it. So that's all your your fabrics placed onto the hoop, and now it's just cutting away, same as you did for the the plain fabric one. You're just cutting away all the excess fabric on the front of the hoop and on the back of the hoop. So these segments are all the same. So um, you have three different designs. You've got your first, which is A here. Um, the next segment we do is called segment B. And the only difference um, is it has a joining stitch. So the, the way you place your fabrics is exactly the same. So you're just basically copying exactly what you've done here. The third segment is just the last um, segment, which joins two pieces, which we'll get into later. So that's it really. So now it's time to show you how to construct everything. Okay, so we've loaded uh, segment B and G, it looks the same. And that's because it is. As I say, the only difference is the joining stitch. So you do the same thing. You um, put your backing on, your pallet, your fabric and cut away the edges. Then you get to this point, which is when you put it back in the hoop, you stitch the next colour which is a zigzag and it takes you down to where you're going to join your first segment which you can see just there we're putting it on now. Now basically all you're doing is you're matching the stitching lines and you're just zigzagging down through the point. It's going to stop just at the corner just so you can realign and make sure you've got it right. Now I do it like this. I, um, I don't pin, I don't do anything like that. Um, if you're new to this or have problems with your joins, there's some really, really good videos on our video page. Um, Kay especially, uh, she does a really great job of showing um, how she uses tape to position things. Now it's just going to go off and do all the embroidery again, which as I say, I'm not going to bore you with because it takes a wee while, even with the magic of sewing machines. Now that's segment two attached. Now that's using the B pattern. Now you're just going to keep continue doing this. So you're going to do it five more times. And so it's exact same fabric placement, exact same design. 
So that's just the coloured one. This, it does make it look easier when you see the different colours. And here I am, this is the third segment. Exactly the same thing. I'm getting down to the joining stitch again. This seems obviously is the area that um, if you're going to have a problem it happens with the joins. That's why I am showing it in the video. There you go, you've got the two pieces on, or three pieces on now. Go off and do the embroidery. And when you finish, take it out of the hoop and it's going to look like that. And so once again, you just neaten up those raw edges for the next join that you're going to do. And I'm going to show you one more time that joining. This is obviously sped out, so I don't do it quite that fast. Um, I do stop and start. Um, that's, that's how I find it's personal preference how you join. Go off and do the embroidery again, and then you end up with that's the coloured one and do it one more time with that same um, design number B and this next step is where you've got to change your design out and put um, segment C on it's, this is going to have the double join so I'm just showing you on the coloured one here so same thing we ended up at the exactly as before you're ending up where the join is zigzag down this few slot it's going to stop at the point so you can realign yeah, you can see how I, this is how I do it I sort of stop and start that is all practice okay so that's the so we say normal join done now it's going to actually just stitch back up to the top again uh, where you're going to join the second part which is the red part which is your first segment that you did same thing just going a different way but it's exactly the same idea it's going to stitch down to that point and then it's going to just do the wee line oops changing sides here yeah, i'm doing this around a video camera too so it is um, we call it cat handed. I'm not quite sure if it's a term, worldwide term, but yeah, I'm just sort of moving around the video camera. Now that's the 8x8 size, so you can see it's quite big. Um, the 8x10 makes it even bigger. So here we go, you've done basically the rings. Now we're on to the centre. Um, same for all of them, one fabric in, in both varieties and you could probably do it yourself without me telling you keep your water sol soluble, put your backing fabric underneath, put your beating and your fabric stitch the guide line now there's some really pretty quilting on this one I quite like it, especially on, the, on just the plain tone on tone, I thought it was really pretty This time you're going to stitch the quilting before you cut away the fabric. And it's just going to go off there. There you go. See, it is really, I say, quite pretty. If you want to, you can leave that out. Um, you now put a design. You can put a design in there if you prefer instead of the um, quilting. Now, when it comes to the centre, by this point, if um, any like little differences in the joining, it can be a little bit. So what you're doing is you're actually kind of laying it on top. You're, um, as I say, if, if there's any bits that are out, it's going to be at this point. So just lay your centre on top, making sure that it's visually pro um, looking good. Now, we've done the joining in four bits, so it's going to come down um, the top right-hand side and stop. Down again to the bottom. Then it's going to whiz back up to the top again. 
and this is just to make joining easier because it's easier to control your machine when it's coming down this way rather than trying to control how it goes um, going backwards and again down to the midpoint and then the last bit down to the middle, oh, down to the end, sorry. That's the hard part done. Now all you need to do is stitch the final um, colour, which is just the pretty satin stitch and decorative edge. And that's it, you've made your winner's circle in the hoop placement. All you need to do from here now is just um, remove all the excess stabiliser and I just use a Q-tip and go around the edges with uh, warm water. Here we go, that was still in the machine, the coloured one. And here we go, we've got... And so it's actually really pretty, really pretty, you can really see the quilting on that, that one really well. Um, but then the rainbow one's pretty too, and I'm sure you ladies are going to come up with some really pretty ideas. Um, maybe some Christmas fabrics. As I say, you can put a, rather than the quilting on the centre, you can have a Christmas design. That's trying to sort of show you the size of the um, placemat. It's quite big. And then my little white one that I've put my pretty roses on. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and it explains the techniques used for uh, this placemat. Uh, as I say, the instructions give all the colours to do and when to stitch them out. And this yeah, video is to be used in conjunction with those uh, instructions. I hope you enjoy making it. Thank you.